Before we get to all of that and what, what you've been up to in the past year and a half or two years, I'd like to jump back to the beginning very quickly, if that's okay. Now, I read somewhere that you started off your kind of musical uh, path with piano and you listen to a lot of classical music. When for you in your childhood or teens, did you start putting words onto paper? Ooh, uh, I was putting words onto paper a bit when I was maybe 13, but I didn't really, I didn't, I didn't get good at it or what I considered to be decent at it um, until I was in like my 20s. Okay. I never really took, um, I never took lyrics seriously because I never was, I just never paid attention to lyrics and other songs until somebody told me that uh, my lyrics were bad. And then it was like a challenge. And then it became something I was really, really passionate about and, and put a lot of effort into. What compelled you uh, at first to write uh, songs and what to, to put those thoughts into those songs? Um, I, I, I just love music. I don't know. I like anybody else, like I love music and, and uh, I'm a little bit of a narcissist. So I feel like people should listen to what I have to say. And so it was kind of the perfect marriage. Like it made sense to do something like this. And you say it didn't, uh, it wasn't until you're around 20 where you started kind of uh, feeling proud about what you were writing. So can, can you take me through that uh, personal development as a songwriter? Kind of, a, as, you, as you mentioned, you weren't that inter interested in lyrics before that. So how did you kind of hone into that side of, of what you do now? Uh, I honestly, like it sucks to say, but it was validation from other people. Mm. It was as soon as we, we had some songs that, that people listened to, whether it was, was friends or like people who were discovering, uh, me or the band or whatever. And, and if it, it made people feel something that made me feel something and it compelled me to like dig deeper and, and, and want to do it even more. Um, yeah, I, I think if, if that had never happened, I don't know that I'd ever be this like I don't know that I would put this much importance into lyrics had it not been for other people uh, you know telling me that it was important to them which I don't know I don't know if that's a good thing on a psychological level but that's the truth when, as you were starting uh, early in music uh, what was your ambition so to say what did you get out of it when I was starting I just wanted to be a rock star okay I just thought it was the coolest thing ever um and then when when we started becoming even a little bit like moderately successful, that kind of went out the window because because we had I don't know, I got to live the lifestyle that I thought I always wanted. And it made me it didn't make me happy. It made me more depressed. Right. Uh, and so I had to figure out another way. And then I got really deep into lyric writing and realizing, like, if I can actually say something that I think is valuable to somebody else. Like it makes, it makes it seem like the, the whole thing is, a, is slightly less ego driven, even though it is ego driven. Um, but I think that's, that's why there's, there's such a mix of songs on, on both of our albums. There's such a mix of songs that, that just sound like a fun person who's just writing fun songs and having a blast. And then the songs that are really, really like taking really intense topics and, and singing about them in a way that um, is kind of unique and, and really direct and, and intense. And that's why that is, because I, I couldn't just do one or the other. Mm. I kind of have to have that balance of both. Right. That, but, but am I right in saying, and I, I might be uh, wrong in this, but that early on in your career, you felt a bit disingenuous uh, in a way that you were getting, um, cre not credit, but, but kind of praise for, for things that you didn't really feel like represented yeah. yourself well. Yeah, exactly. So, so how did you break through that then? Uh, was it just from, from one song to the next that all of a sudden one song started to work that you did put all of yourself into or? Yeah. 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 It, that's, yeah, it's not, it's really not that complicated. That was it. It was just, there was, we, in the beginning we were just doing the rock star thing, I guess. And then, mm -hmm. um, I wasn't happy. I didn't think I was going to continue doing it. And so the song started becoming about that feeling. Mm -hmm. And then when we put those out and people reacted in, in, in a much different way, like in an emotional way, rather than just like, you know, I, I didn't feel comfortable going out on stage, kind of putting on this act like I was a confident rock star guy who, who you know, it was that, it was that part that was like, 
confusing and, and stressful and, 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 and made me anxious and, and uncomfortable. So yeah, it, it was, it was once I started writing about what was real to me and that ended up being real to other people, then it, then it started making sense, but I kind of had to go through all those motions. I had to go through that, the whole wave of all of it to really figure that out. And then as people started to hear the songs and, and, uh, you started to gain a little bit of success. What was that like then to, to kind of navigate those waters as well? To have Well, those... it was also bittersweet. It, okay. Yeah. Cause it was, it was amazing to have that. Um, it was amazing, amazing to have validation for reasons that felt like the right reasons. Right. Um, but then also, you know, the, a song like ghosts was, was massive and it was, oh, sorry. It was, it was pretty clear that like, I, I was, I was just writing from the perspective of somebody going through this and I had none of the answers And yet I felt this pressure um, when I was actually interfacing with people who were fans of our band. You know, in, in the beginning, we went out after every single show and we would talk to everybody. There was no meet and greets or anything like that. Right. So we would just go out and talk to everybody. And um, and it was too it was too much because I'm not I'm not a licensed therapist. I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know anything about this stuff. I just know my own experience. And um, and that that was tricky. Um, but still, that was still better. Like that was still better than, than dealing with my own personal stuff before I had written that song. So it was, yeah. Right. There's a the balance. Did, did that writing, did, did your development as a songwriter, did that help you on a personal level in a sense? Oh with yeah. Figure, totally. figuring out? Okay. Yeah. 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 So uh, some of the things, some of the things that I've learned about myself, I wouldn't have learned had I not sort of, uh, uh, mm. dug into my, myself to figure out what the song was that I was trying to figure out. Like, I guess it starts kind of surface level and casual where I'm just like, oh, I'm feeling this sort of way. You know, you can start with a, a, a just a, an emotion. I'm feeling sad or I'm feeling whatever, like some, right. some very, some emotion. And then you start writing about it and you start putting it into words. Then eventually um, you're digging deeper and deeper into why you're feeling that way. And now I have something very specific I want to write about. And then by the end of it, I'm like, huh, I didn't know that about myself, but here we are, you know? Because if we then move to, to uh, the new album then, because one song that, that fits, I, I would say, this this idea then is uh, Family, where I suppose yeah. that was easier to sing about or to write about than, than to have those conversations, which... which um, but first, of all, what made you kind of end up writing that song? What made you delve into that? Um. I've been struggling with things for, uh, for most of my life, I think, like most of from, from teens on, um, that have been progressively getting worse. And I've kind of like shut, shut it out because I'm so career focused and I'm not very social. And, um, like I have a very small group of friends that I, that I talk to. And even, even then, like, I don't know, I'm kind of just like a lonely dude. And I, and I like, I like focusing my, on my career and being creative and, I've realized that I've let certain aspects of my life and relationships and family stuff like really, really suffer. And it's gotten harder and harder for me to sort of address it and figure out exactly what's happening. And, um, and I spent most of my life like taking the, the uh, sort of like wearing the victim hat on that, like taking the victim approach, like, Oh, it's, it's them. You know, I don't owe anybody anything. And, and I think that's like, that's a, that's a good way to go about things. If you're typically on the other end of it, where you're constantly like, you know, feeling like the villain when you're not, but when you're constantly feeling like the victim and in reality, you're the one who's causing the problems and you're, you're the one who has the power and potential to fix these problems and make things better for people that you really do care about and you don't do it, then it is your fault. And that's kind of like the conclusion that I, I came to, while writing the song like I didn't have that I, I didn't know that exactly until the song was finished especially until right before the song came out and I was like well I have to actually talk to my family and let them know that I'm I'm doing this like putting this out and I and I sort of was at a crossroads right in that moment where I was like I could just send them a link and not say anything or I could suck it up and and talk about it with them in the same way that it, like if I can talk about it in a public space like this like I have to I have to be able to talk to them and I did And it was like so easy. It was so easy to do once it like once I got to that point. So it, that that whole the whole process of that song, like writing it and releasing it, was a very healing experience for me. 
Right. Yeah. And then, then did they like the song? Yeah, they did. They loved it. <laughs> I mean, okay. it, like, yeah, it made it made it made them very emotional and and you know, but also my family has had to hear a lot of like my family had to hear Ghost. And right. we had to have that conversation. And and that was like back in a time when I, I was very, very distant and not talking to them and they wouldn't have known exactly how I was feeling. And so, you know, that's that's like typical. <laughs> typical. <laughs> right. Yeah. But it, there's an element to that, which is very interesting, because I've been speaking to a couple of artists uh, recently and then who tell me they're very obsessive and, and perhaps this is what you uh, kind of alluded to just now, that you're very obsessive with your music. You spend a lot of time uh, thinking and working on it. Uh, but they also said that yes, they lament the fact that, that that they are so obsessive. But it's also kind of the reason why it becomes uh, something, or the reason why it becomes good in their estimation. So, do you have a sense of that as well? No, a thousand percent. That is the reason why it becomes good. But at what cost, though? Mm. That's kind of what I'm wrestling with now. Is how right. how, how far? Like, how much am I going to allow myself to to to? to seclude myself and suffer and become this person that I don't really like being in order for this art that I, that I'm creating. And it's easy to rationalize that for me because I think, well, I, I'm, I, you know, I, I might make it to 85 years old if I'm lucky and my music's going to outlive me for thousands of that, you know? Mm -hmm. And so why, why should I care about what's happening in my actual life when this, this clearly is something that's going to outlast me and it's more important, but it's just not true. Like the, I think right. that is a very, I, I'm not a therapist, as I've mentioned, but I think a therapist would say you're a narcissist. Like that's a very narcissistic thing, way of thinking, um, because it's just not true. Like I, I, my the music that I make, the lyrics that I, I write, are not a conscious being, mm. but I am one, <laughs> I, and I should, I should, I should be priority over whatever it is that I'm creating. But it's 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 tough to do that. I also just I really enjoy being alone and, and writing songs like I just love it in, in that in that sense then how important is it to have the three guys around you to kind of uh, pull you out of, of that 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 seclusion oh, in a way super important um because I don't feel like like I still feel like I'm in that mindset when they're around as well so like I do go off often and and just like write and do stuff alone but then there are times when I'm like I'm in too deep I need help like desperately need help and um yeah they're they're very supportive and very talented too so it's like I don't know it we do think like there there have been certain songs where it's been very collaborative and everybody around and then other songs where they're like no this is definitely you you know, I, I don't I don't ever have to ask for them to, to mm. like, oh, I'm just going to go do this. It's just so like we we have such a process and it's so understood and it works so well, um, which took, took a while to figure that out as well. Well, where was this process or in what stage was this process as kind of the the whole world started to to fall to pieces? When, when was it? I'm sorry. When when the whole Corona thing and then kind of the whole lockdown started and then uh, where, where was the state of kind of the, uh, in what stage of the, the creative process were you in terms of the second album? <clears throat> sorry. Oh, we, right, right before coronavirus happened, uh, I was, I was already writing. Okay. And so we had like a couple one-off shows that we had to go do, but between those shows, I was, I was already like alone writing. Um, getting prepared to like present something to the band like here I have I have a package of like ideas or songs let's work on these um, but I had planned on isolating before the pandemic okay. happened so like okay. not a lot changed for me except for like you know it, it, it there was a moment where it was hard for all of a, a, us band members to be in a room together and when we wanted to book studio time it was a bit more complicated but for the most part it was like it, it was what it was what we were already doing we were already isolating is that where the idea to self-produce the album came from or was that on your mind already? Yeah, that, that was that was on my mind halfway through the first album. Okay. Uh, how come? Yeah, yeah. Um, it, well, we, we self-produce. I mean, I've been self-producing forever. I mean, it's sure. what I started doing when I was a kid. And uh, I don't know, there's, there's certain rules you feel like you have to follow when things get bigger. You know, you, you sign a record deal and you have an agent, you have all these people around. You're like, well, we have to get an amazing producer. And now and now we're able to sort of take our pick because we have a bit of a status. So we can kind of look look through the list of people like, oh, I'd really like to get the person who produced that record. 
Mm. Um, and we did that on, on OK, I'm Sick, and we had Noah Shane, and he was amazing. And he really, like, he taught all of us so much. But even he, during this, the process of the, of the first record, was like, you're going to do the next one alone. <laughs> I was like, no, are you think? And he's like, yeah, you're definitely going to do the next one. Like, he was the first person who actually put it in my head. Um, yeah, we did our first EP alone. We, we, we hired a, 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 a mixer who mixed a bunch of amazing stuff to mix that EP, and we hated it, and I ended up mixing it myself. Like, we're just a very DIY group, and that spirit, just we just can't leave it. This might be um, difficult to characterize them, but what would you say the four of you kind of collectively gravitate towards them in terms of sound or in terms of what you want to, or how you want the music to come across from a production standpoint? Uh, we all, we, from a production standpoint, we just wanted it to sound genuine. We did, we don't like, um, like, I don't mind overproduction. I don't mind like synthetic instruments or leaning into the fact that we're using computers on things. Um, but our band is all about sort of realness and rawness. And, uh, and we just didn't want that to go away. Hmm. And I don't feel like it did for this album. I think this is the realest and rawest thing that we've done. Like even when it's leaning into technology, it still has has sort of a rawness to it that I, I'm really proud of. All of us are really proud of. Yeah, I, I did read somewhere that the way it was set up that you did use a lot of first takes and kind of tried to capture that moment uh, in itself. So how, how did you go yeah. about it? And I, I, I believe um, you built a studio inside a barn. Yeah, I'm in it. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm in it now and I've got light. We're about to tour. So now I'm like programming lights. This all is right. how DIY we are. I'm doing all the <laughs> okay. lighting program in my, in my studio. Um, yeah, we, we, we moved to Tennessee. <laughs> well, I moved to Tennessee with a couple friends. Um, and Joey, our guitarist, already was living in Nashville. And the other two guys were in Pittsburgh. So it kind of made sense for us to all get out of California. And uh, yeah, I just wanted to... I, uh, LA was no fun anymore. And... Uh, <laughs> We couldn't afford it. We, we All of our tours got canceled. So it was like, well, we might as well spend the remaining money that we have on a down payment on some land and like carry out this dream. And we did. And it was awesome. And what I find interesting, and I already kind of uh, asked, asked what your ambition was uh, early on when you started out in music, but as you continue this, this road in, in music, um, because I read somewhere you said about uh, the previous record, I put the gold record on the wall and I continue to be depressed. So, so in, the, in a sense, what is that dream that you're trying to live? I don't know. Well, fair enough. I don't know the answer fair to enough. that. I, I, still, I still want all the child, like the things that I wanted as a kid that I kind of already have now. Like I've already surpassed all the things that I thought I wanted. Hmm. Um, I actually never really dreamed about like being this massive headlining band. I only ever dreamed about like supporting the cool bands. Like, being, you know what I mean? Because sure. it seemed like a slightly more realistic dream and we've surpassed all of those things. And, and it's awesome. I, I think part of the reason this, this buying this farm was such an impulsive, like important thing was it's a side, it's a side plan. I don't believe in backup plans at all. I think if you're if you if you set yourself up with a backup plan, you're kind of setting yourself up to fail at the thing that you really want to do. But I like having something that's I don't know, very very different. Like I I've always had a dream to to rescue animals, and I just wanted land. And there's so much that I can do with this space that has nothing to do with music, and then mm -hmm. there's also so much that I can do with it that has everything to do with music, and it just feels like I don't know if 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 The, the path that Bad Flower takes me ever makes me extremely unhappy. I have some kind of root somewhere else mm. and something else that also makes me happy. And I'm not asking that in the sense as, as I know what I want. I'm 35 now. I have no clue what I want out of life still. So yeah, I don't, I don't think we ever do. It's a tricky it's thing. Tough. It's really. Yeah. But so... Uh, If we move towards a couple more songs on the album then, because, uh, well, I should say you wanted to be as raw and uh, honest as, as it can be, but you also mentioned, um, well, how do you see art in a way? What is your conception of art? Because one thing that I like to talk with, about with people, and this is something I heard you say as well, is that art 
sometimes has to be challenging. It, it, it's not always mm -hmm. kind of the easy listening thing, but you want to challenge your audience in a way as well. So uh, yeah. what are, how do you see art or what is your conception of the art that you make? Well, the conception of the art that I make isn't necessarily how, like the importance that I place on the art that I make is not the same importance that I place on the art that I consume. Okay. If that makes sense. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Like I actually consume uh, like when it comes to music or movies or honestly, any, any form of art, I consume a lot of escapism stuff. Like I, I, I oftentimes don't want to be confronted with things um, in my day to day life. I like just, you know, diving into some other story or, or whatever and, 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 and letting some other emotion come out that isn't specifically mine. Um, but that's just not the art that I like to make. Like, I, I almost like, I, I think if I wasn't in my band and my band was a, another band that I had the opportunity to be a fan of and listen to, I would be a fan, but I wouldn't, it would, I don't know that it would be something I would listen to all the time. Mm. And I'm actually surprised that we have fans who like listen to us all the time. <laughs> um, and I, it's amazing, but I just don't, I don't know that I would. I think it's, it might be a little bit too intense. That said, there are a lot of other artists and other songs that have come out that are super confronting and super like eye opening. And they're like, if I'm going to go on social media and share a song or something, it's usually something that's like that. Like, Hey, look at what this mm. person did. Look at what they said. Like everybody needs to hear this. It always feels like the more important thing, you know? They, they seem so to I last have... a bit longer, I think, L or linger. When, whenever there's, uh, I, I can only relate it to movies, but certain movies make me think, or uh, even music, certain music makes me think, and other music is just, oh, it's a cool song, but then next week there's another cool song, but they don't linger. There's uh, songs that have a bit more substance to them or movies that have a bit more substance to them, that they linger more, I yeah. think. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's true. I've never really thought about it, but you're saying it, so I believe you. <laughs> well, I, I'm, I'm, like I said, I, I don't know what I'm talking about either. So, <laughs> yeah. well, I, I've just, thought, I've, I've seen, I've seen like pop songs that seem to be really contrived and, and, uh, you know, so clearly written by like five people in a studio just trying to make a product be the songs that you hear on the radio forever, you know. Um, but then again, like I don't know, uh, for us, our biggest song is "Ghost." It still gets played on the radio every day all over the world. And it is a very confronting song. And I don't think we have any other song that still gets as much play as that one does. So do you have a point? Well, did you not aim for it? But, but do you hope uh, that that title might be overtaken by a song on the new record then? Oh, of course. I hope so. Which um, this may be an unfair question then, but which which one would would be that for you then? If it was up to me, it'd be family. Okay, fair enough. Yeah, I was adamant about. Actually, our whole band was. Um, family had to be the first single, the first look, the first everything. Because um, I really just yeah I don't know it it it's a really special song for me. And the reaction so far has been what I had hoped it would be, which is people really understand it. And it's, it really is like, it really is opening a set of doors into this back dark closet version of emotions and, and thoughts that I, I don't think a lot of people think about often. There's, a, like there's, this, a, there's, oh, this, there's this version of it, you know, it's, it, it, Everybody has family drama and everybody can tie it to specific things, but there are specific lyrics in that song, like affection makes me nauseous that I still hear and think about. And I don't know that anybody's ever said that. And I think I'm not the only one I've discovered now. I'm not the only one who's experienced this very specific thing where for some reason, it's very difficult to be affectionate towards sure. the people who you love the most or care about the most. Like, I don't know that anybody's ever talked about that. Uh, at least in 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 a, a song that's on the radio, and so that to me is like that's what I'm proud of, and that's what I want. It's those types of things that I've done um, uh, lyrically, and that the band has done just as a as a an artistic machine that right. we're really the most proud of, and we want we want people to hear. I wrote down from that song. Now I have to find it. Um... 
I can't, I can't remember where I put it down. Uh, being thoughtful uh, can be so hard. That, that's the lyric that kind of hit me because that's what I struggle with, with just giving somebody a call on, on their birthday or something like that. And it's, you're trying, but at the same time, you're not really trying. It's, it's such a weird. Yeah. And then, and then it's something so simple, right? Like, uh, but it festers in your head yeah. and you blow it up. Like, you may even go like I've had th I've had this happen where I've gone out and purchased a birthday card and then I get a pen to fill it out just to say something nice. But then it comes down to it and that card sits. I, I don't I don't right. ever give the card. It's just there. I end up throwing it away later. I never said happy birthday. like this could be to a family like to whoever. That's happened to me multiple times because I blow it up in my head. And for some reason, it's so difficult for me to do to, mm. to show this affection. Like I think about handing the card to the person and I start to get physically sick and I don't I, I haven't figured out exactly I mean I have I sort of have and I sort of have and a lot of it's like personal to me but it is a real thing it's it's a thing that I've learned now after putting up the song that a lot of other people have gone through and and that's the kind of thing that's just I really enjoy writing about and singing about I'm like this is something very unique and specific that I I I think I'm, I think I can tackle it. Like, I think I can figure out the right way to, to express this. Uh, fi uh, final question then, uh, this is how the world ends. Um, when did you know that had to be the title? Oh, it was at the very end. Okay. Uh, yeah, we, we, we went through so many titles. We did a final listen through a, a, at the studio at our management office. And uh, we had like three contenders that the band, we were on a, in a text feed and this is how the world ends is one of them. And yeah, it just stuck. It just made the most sense. It felt right. You know, we were playing around with like text designs. That's, that's what you do. You like sort of sit and you Photoshop some things and it looked right. It felt right. It sounded, it sounded right. Are you optimistic about the future? No. <laughs> Fair enough. Like Fair the future enough. in general or my future? Well, well both. I would say, but I would probably give the same answer because as, as soon as you put on the news, you, you know it's not going in the right or it's not going in a good direction. But it also, I, I also feel like it's it depends on what you focus on. So, yeah, I don't know. Let, let's say I, the I'm, band then. Uh, are you optimistic optimistic about the future of the band? This record then. I'm fairly certain that this record's going to do really well and that we're going to have all the career success that we want. I don't know on a personal and emotional level how that's going to make me feel. Fair so, enough. you know, as much as I want it now and I work so hard for this validation from other people and, and from myself, I guess, so I can be proud of what I do. I can't predict how I'm going to feel about that. <laughs> so... I don't know, but right. so far it's been really good. Like we're we're three singles in, and the reaction's good, and I'm really happy and and stoked to be you know playing shows and doing everything that we're doing. So so far so good. I've just been I've been here before. Like, I've, enough, been, yeah. I've been down this road, and I know that it's it's not as simple as oh your songs are doing well, you should be happy. Or like I don't know what if there's there's a lot of content on here that is very confronting, and the internet is awful. <laughs> and um it's very possible that that this goes horribly wrong like horribly wrong and i and i've never experienced that before and i don't know how that's gonna make me feel so we'll see we'll see we'll what happens see, we'll see indeed josh thank you so much for taking the time to talk with me you're very welcome it was a good chat